Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Good evening. Good evening. There's something strange on his face. I think it's Movember or something like that. Today's Mass is being offered for uh, uh, Mario Acconi, requested by Ordorina or, or Acconi, and uh, also for Manuel de Mendoca. That's how the English say it. It's Mendoza. Sorry, Mendoza. Um, requested by the granddaughter, uh, Lina es Estevez. Estevez and also uh, for mercy of Teresa. And we begin our prayers this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we ask for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And with your spirit. Jesus had some harsh criticism to make of the scribes and Pharisees. He called them hypocrites because they didn't practice what they preached. Which of us can truthfully say that our deeds match our words? Therefore, to some extent, all of us are hypocrites. But each time we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we're called by God to a life of truth and genuine goodness. Lord Jesus, help us to concentrate on inner goodness. Lord, have mercy. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Pray. 
Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is reverenced among the nations. And now, O priests, this command is for you. If you will not listen, if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send the curse on you, and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them, because you do not lay it to heart. You have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. And so I make you despised and abased before all the people, inasmuch as you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in your instruction. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our ancestors? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves. Because you have become very dear to us, you remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We work night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is also at work in you believers. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' chair. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a saying in Portuguese which translated, translated literally, it goes like this, be careful of the tame mule's kick. Scripture scholar William Barclay commenting on today's uh, gospel passage writes, if a man is characteristically and temperamentally an irritable, ill-tempered and irascible creature, Notoriously given to uncontrolled outbursts of passionate anger, then his anger is neither effective nor impressive. Nobody pays any attention to the anger of a bad-tempered man. But when a, pe a person who is characteristically meek and lowly, gentle and loving, suddenly erupts into blazing wrath, then even the most thoughtless person must be shocked into taking thought. That is why the anger of Jesus is so awe-inspiring a sight. It is seldom in literature that we find so unsparing and sustained an indictment as we find in this chapter. End quote. But why was Jesus so angry? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. He absolutely despised the dispraised characteristics of pride and hypocrisy. And the scribes and the Pharisees were on full display exhibiting the two. Like the business manager who had just moved into his new, very large corner office. An employee walked in. The manager picked up the phone and started an imaginary conversation, flattering himself. He signaled to the employee that he'd be with him shortly. The employee said, Take your time, sir. I'm here to hook up your phone. <laughs> a proud heart, wrote Frank, uh, Benjamin Franklin, is like a crooked fence. All the paint in the world won't straighten it. The, pro the, the problem of pride and hypocrisy is an ageless one, and it was as bothersome in Jesus' time as it is today. We read about hypocrisy and pride in all of the Gospels. Since creation, no century corners the market on these characteristics. Can anyone even remotely imagine a proud or hypocritical Jesus? And yet, if anyone had much to be proud of, it is he. So today, my friends, we're asked to uh, reflect on this question. What kind of disciple is Jesus looking for? And right off the bat, I'll give you an example. A monk was sat to, uh, set, sent to an abbey uh, to be the new abbot. 
When he arrived at the abbey because of his worn out clothing, the other monks judged him to be inferior, so they sent him to the kitchen, where their new abbot spent weeks scouring pots and shelling beans. Well, one day the bishop arrived, and when he couldn't find the abbot, he went searching for him. He found him in the kitchen preparing dinner. Well, after dinner, the bishop presented him to the monks in the chapel. Those monks who judged him inferior received a lifetime lesson in humility. The abbot is the kind of disciple the teacher is looking for. To quote Barclay again, no one who is proud can pray. The gate of heaven is so low that no one can enter it save upon their knees. End quote. The proud, we are told, pray on Sunday and pray, P-R-E-Y, on those about them throughout the week. What good is it to come here and worship in this sacred place to celebrate the Lord's Supper and the Eucharist and then as soon as we go out the door and out the parking lot and someone cuts us off, we forget all that we heard and start honking the horn of our cars or even worse, making obscene gestures. Rather than we are to pray with God on Sunday and walk with God on Monday. The abbot reminds us that when we think we're humble, we're really not. So let us look into ourselves and ask if any of us have the nasty habit of being proud of our humility. Do we come to church to learn what it is that our neighbors should do to lead better lives? He that is proud, said Shakespeare, eats himself up. Proud, scripture tells us, goes before the fall. In Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, Alice found a mushroom. And when she ate one side of the mushroom, she found herself getting smaller. When she ate the other side, she found herself getting taller. Of the two situations, Alice decided that smaller was better. For as she was reduced in size, all things and people about her looked more wonderful. Less, she discovered, can be more. Small can be beautiful. And us, we are forever debating which side of the mushroom to eat. If we allow ourselves that portion which makes, makes us larger, everything else about us will lack wonder. We will become full of ourselves, puffed up with our own self-worth. Critics will put us down as being hypocrites. We will develop in ourselves the very faults which we detest in others. The proud, says the wise person, detest pride in others. It's only when we allow ourselves to grow smaller and smaller are we able to see the world in a tiny grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. Because then not only will we bring ourselves joy, but also we are able to share that joy with others. We will be God's ambassadors. It is then that we please the Master. We will become children that the man from Nazareth asked us to be. We will rush into the kingdom of God laughing and singing that upbeat him. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Here's another example of humility. A member of parliament attends a weekly prayer group. At the end of the meeting, while our other participants rush off to go on their way, the MP stays back and stacks chairs and cleans up. He is the highest ranking person there, and yet it is not beneath him to clean up and stack chairs. What a great role model. No one, history tells us, has ever choked to death from swallowing their own pride. Can those of us who really know ourselves afford to be proud? Now, in this homily, we'll get another story in humility. Because of his great devotion and faithfulness to his king, a shepherd was promoted to the position of prime minister. The other ministers were angry that someone of such lowly origin should be so highly honored, and they tried 
to find in some way to bring him into this favor. But they couldn't find anything objectionable about him except one curious thing. Once a week, he'd enter into a little room he kept locked and stay there for about an hour. The nobles told the monarch about this, that they were certain he must be sneaking some of the wealth of the kingdom into that room. The king doubted it, but gave permission to break into the room and make the search. What they found was a small bundle containing a dilapidated pair of shoes and an old robe. The prime minister was brought before the king and asked about this curious bundle in the locked room. And the shepherd read, said, I wore these things when I was a shepherd. I look at them regularly so that I won't forget what I once was and how unworthy I am of all the kindness and honor you have given me. Jesus would take this man as his disciple. My friends, the opposite of pride is humility. And this is a word that comes from, uh, the word comes for ground, for humus. But being humble doesn't mean that we treat ourselves like dirt. It means that we are to be fertile, filled with the possibility, open to the planting of the seeds of hope and love, so that we may be the disciples that Jesus is looking for, going out to share and that hope and love with those around us. Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was consoled by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the God who is devoted and providential towards us. For Christians everywhere, that we may not be content with the appearance of goodness, but seek the real thing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of the church, that they may practice in their own lives what they preach to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hold public office, that they may not seek their own glory, but to be of service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are overburdened and who have no one to help them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here today, that the practice of our religion to help us to grow in love and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special needs and all those who have asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends, we pray for those names listed in our bulletin sickness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, especially Diane Boyd, and all those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world, especially in the Middle East and in the Ukraine. Through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, the Queen of Peace, we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, grant that what we have said with our lips, we may believe with our hearts and practice in our lives. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the entire people your son has gained for his own. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's love. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
So thank you for being here. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for Deacon Silverio coming back. It's great. He went away for a few weeks and I've been alone, so it's been nice. It's nice to have him back. Um, just a reminder that uh, this Friday and Remembrance Day, uh, November 10th, we'll have a, a walk over to the Cenotaph at 11 a.m. So the whole high school is walking over if you'd like to join us at the Cenotaph at the City Hall office. Also, uh, tomorrow is EDGE, so our young people will be gathering downstairs and they're, they're also going to do the ministries in the uh, 1145 Mass, which is going to be kind of fun. Um, also, on the 18th of November, we have our candle lighting service, and this is at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I'd, I'd like you to actually, if you're coming and you're going to remember someone, we need to kind of have the names before the service. So if you could email St. John's Albion at BT, which is the bereavement team, uh, Gmail, and then let us know you're coming. That way we can prepare. Also, the uh, Knights of Columbus Dinner Dance, they're still selling tickets for the Dinner Dance. Uh, it's November uh, 25th, and uh, we're over 60% sold now, so it's wonderful. It's going to be a real fun night, so certainly uh, check that out. And they're uh, raising the funds to help pay for the new sign. So we have a beautiful, I don't know if you've noticed our beautiful new sign, but we have a beautiful new sign. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, they're going to cover that for us, so I'm very grateful for them. Also, the CWL have their bake sale on December 2nd and 3rd. So if you're interested in doing some baking for them, it'd be a wonderful thing. You can drop it off at the rectory on November 26th or call the office and Drodo will be sure to uh, fill you in on all that. Uh, November 8th at 7.30 is the baptism prep meeting because we had to move it because of uh, All Saints Day. And um, we have something new starting, which is kind of interesting. It's a young adults program. So it's um, an opportunity for young adults to get together and it'll be once or twice a month. We're not quite sure how it's going to work out yet, but um, it's for ages 18 to 35. And um, we'll have a speaker in the next couple of weeks getting up to talk to us about it. Um, so if you could be, call the office or email the office with your email address, we'll put you on an email list. And uh, there's a variety of different things that young people are going to do. So it's just something for a little older than little ones, right? At my age, I think I'm a bigger little one, but it's one of those things. But young adults, so it's from 18 to 30. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, and I always like to end with a joke. I'm not sure how good this one is, but I used to play Scrabble years ago, so it kind of kind of fits in. It's not really about humility. It's just about Scrabble. So um, this... Uh, this family gets a new puppy dog and they get into the Scrabble game and they eat all the Scrabble letters. And of course, the guy's up all night with this puppy and he goes to work the next day and, and the guy says, boy, you look tired. He says, yeah, I was up all night with this puppy at the veterinarian. Uh, they, they, uh, he ate all the letters from Scrabble and, and the guy says, well, what's happening? He says, well, we haven't got a word yet. <laughs> you gotta really play Scrabble to get that one. Have a blessed and glorious week. <laughs>